Hello chess lovers, Soren here and I have a fantastic game for you played at 2018 Korshnoi Memorial. With white pieces playing David Paravian and his opponent is Savelli Golubov. This game was played in round 6 and Paravian started the game with e4, e5 by Golubov, knight f3, knight f6. We see the Petrov's defense. Knight takes e5, white is going for the classical variation, d6, black is first kicking away white knight and then is winning back the lost pawn. Knight takes e4, d4, d5, bishop d3, bishop d6. Usually Petrov's defense leads to quiet and dull positions, but this game is actually an exception and we are going to witness a lot of fireworks. We see castling by both sides, c4, white is ready to play with an isolated pawn on d4 square. Of course, all this is a standard stuff and has been seen a lot of times. And by the way, nowadays Petrov's defense is very popular even among the top players. c6, queen b3, d takes c4, bishop takes c4, knight d7, rook e1, knight f6, and knight d2. White is offering an exchange of knights and is getting rid of black's active knight on e4 square. Queen b6, black is offering an exchange of queens, but white is rejecting queen d3 and at the same time is allowing black to capture on b2. Queen takes b2 is on the board, but let's see, where is white's compensation? Rook b1, queen a3, Queen c2, of course, already white is a pawn down and will never go for the exchange of queens. And knight d5. So far, so good. Black was actually doing okay, no problem at all. But instead of playing knight d5, it was better to play b5. Block the bishop's diagonal, attack the bishop, kick it away and then play queen a6 and then try to bring into the game this queen which was cornered on a3 square. But instead after queen c2 we see knight d5. On the surface this looks like a normal move but it turns out that actually this allows white to gain advantage. Here comes rook b3 queen a4 and bishop takes d5, white is first getting rid of that active knight on d5 square and then is playing knight g5 with a direct mating threat, g6 and now you can pause the video and try to find white's next move. Ready? Well, using the fact that the queen on a4 square is misplaced, in this position Paravian went for knight takes h7 sacrifice. The idea is that if king takes h7 then simply rook h3 check and black is losing his queen. By the way, after knight g5, if move like knight f5, then again this knight takes h7 move is playable and then rook h3 can occur and black will lose his queen. But in our main game we see g6 and only the knight takes h7. Bishop f5 was played. Right now two white pieces are hanging. But now white is first giving a check from f6 square and after king g6 again black is taking under attack two white pieces and on the surface it looks like that white is in a very dangerous situation. But in this position Paravan landed another heavy punch. This time he offered his bishop and played bishop h6 check. Look at this. The idea is the same. If a move like king takes h6 then again rook h3 check finishes up black. Black is losing his queen. Let's go back after bishop h6 check, king takes f6 was played and right now as you can see the queen on c2 square is still hanging. But this time Paravian found another spectacular move. He played g4, look at this fantastic queen sacrifice. It turns out that the queen is untouchable because black king can simply get checkmated and then g5 and this is a checkmate. Or after g4, if a move like bishop takes g4, then white can go for queen d2 and looks like that black king is getting checkmated. There is no way to avoid that mating threat. After g4, bishop f4 was played, but Paravian found another fantastic move, this time queen c7, look at this guys, he's just making engine's first choice moves, this is amazing. Again the queen is untouchable because of this g5 checkmate, and at the same time by playing queen c7, white is trying to target black king from e-file, the threat is queen e7 checkmate. 
Bishop takes h6 was played. Already queen e7 won't pass because black king will escape. That's why queen e5 check was played. King g5, h4 check. So far so good. White was making the most precise moves. But instead of playing h4 check, white could actually made quicker by playing rook g3. If rook e8 then f4 check and then queen f6 check and then queen takes g5 checkmate but actually this h4 is also winning this also leads to a checkmate king takes h4 was played well if not like king takes g4 then white can play rook g3 check and again in the end of the day black king is getting checkmated after some conning maneuvers right now the threat is queen h1 check if queen d7 with the idea of meeting queen h1 with bishop h3 then rook e5 if bishop g5 then rook h3 check and then queen g3 check and queen takes g5 checkmate another very impressive line i think but in the game after h4 check king takes h4 was played but now comes another fantastic sacrifice this time rook h3 check the rook can't be captured because of this queen g3 checkmate after rook h3 check king g5 was played but after queen e7 check finally black resigned if king f4 then queen e3 check followed by queen g3 checkmate though as i've already mentioned in the beginning of the game petrov's defense has a reputation of dull and uninspired opening however we could see that using his opponent's inaccuracy paragon managed to create an absolute madness on the board of course nowadays such type of games can be seen rarely and this game will definitely become very popular and will be treasured in chess books Thanks for watching, I hope that you enjoyed this mind-blowing attack. For more games, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video.